Hello, I'm Heather Anderson. I read Faith and the Founders of the American Republic, edited by Mark David Hall and Daniel L. Dryback. I chose to read Chapter 10, titled John Hancock, Congregationalist Revolutionary, written by Gary Scott Smith. Smith points out that despite his substantial contributions to American independence, John Hancock is one of the lesser known and appreciated founding fathers. Researching this further, I found it to be true. In many of the books I looked at online, John Hancock is rarely mentioned, if he's even mentioned at all. John Hancock was born in Braintree, Massachusetts on January 23, 1737. He was the son and the grandson of Congregationalist ministers. However, his father died when he was just seven years old. He was then adopted by his uncle, Thomas Hancock, who was a merchant. His uncle and his aunt were members of Brattle Street Church, and Hancock grew up attending this church. Hancock received his education at Harvard University, which included studies in theology and ethics, with the Bible vital and important to the school's education program. After college, Hancock worked as a clerk for his uncle until his uncle's death. At that time, he inherited his uncle's business and his fortune. Hancock was the first president of the Continental Congress and a delegate to the Continental Congress from 1775 to 1780, and again from 1785 to 1786. He presided over the Massachusetts Convention that ratified the Constitution. He was the governor of Massachusetts from 1780 to 1785, and again from 1787 to 1793. Paul Revere went on his legendary midnight ride to warn Hancock and Sam Adams, who were staying in Concord, that the British were coming. According to David Hackett Fisher in his book on Paul Revere's ride, General Gage was given instructions to act decisively by arresting and imprisoning the leaders of the rebellion, which included the principal actors of the Provincial Congress for acts of treason. John Hancock was one of the wealthiest merchants in the colony and spent a large portion of his fortune on financing the revolution. What he did not lose in financing the revolution he shared with the poor. In Dr. Thatcher's sermon on the death of Governor Hancock, he says, his acts of private charity were numerous and constant. The poor, the widow, the fatherless, the unhappy debtor, the prisoner, and the decayed gentleman all experienced his bounty. He gave away astonishing sums and his generosity was proverbial. According to William, William Fowler, author of The Baron of Beacon Hill, he was one of the first people to whom widows and orphans looked to for assistance. He helped to support the children of Joseph Warren, the hero of Bunker Hill. He looked after the families of men who perished in the war, and he gave money to friends and enemies. Fowler suggests that this generosity could have been for political reasons, since he was reelected as a delegate to Congress but I think it could have been for religious reasons. According to Smith, Hancock regularly attended Brattle Street Church, where the pastor, Samuel Cooper, urged the rich and generous to act benevolently, deny themselves the delicacies of life, and to help furnish the poor with the means of substance. Matthew 5.42 says, Give to the one who asks you, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. It seems that Hancock may have taken this to heart. It is possible that in the teachings of Cooper, he taught about Matthew 19, 1630, where Jesus tells the rich young man that to have treasure in heaven, he needed to sell his possessions and give to the poor. Jesus says, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. I do not have any record of Hancock selling his possessions. However, he did give his wealth to the poor. Dr. Thatcher also says in his sermon, Hancock's acts of charity and liberally of a more private nature were numerous and constant. All of his friends and often his enemies partook of them and he seemed to be more happy in cont contributing to the enjoyment of those whom he loved than in his own gratification.